my evilness, Boris, my dear cousins, there's Pugsley and dear Wednesday and, of course, Uncle Gomez and Aunt uh, Morticia. <laughs> what a time. What a time we used to have. Ah, welcome, everyone, and greetings. Welcome to Monster Movie Night. <laughs> I am your host, your internet horror host, Bobby Gamonster, along with my co-host and fiend, Boris T. Buzzard. <laughs> you called us perusing some family albums. Uh, yes, some cousins of ours, uh, especially that wonderful, uh, wonderful and pale Wednesday Adams. <laughs> Yo, you didn't know we were cousins, did you? Well, yes, yes, we most certainly are are cousins and in fact we haven't seen her in such a long time i wonder what she's doing now boys oh, oh hang on our screamophone just went off i wonder who it could be <laughs> mm -hmm. greetings bobby it is i your cousin wednesday cousin wednesday boris and i were just talking about you. Oh, maybe that is why my ears were bleeding. Such a lovely oozing feeling that made me want to call my cousin my favorite cousin and the lovely old curator. Hold that thought and let me put you on video chat line on the screen of phone. Hmm? Hang on one second. All right, we're going to go to video chat line so that we all can see each other. And there we go. Ah, ah, excellent, excellent. <laughs> ah, that's much better. Uh, you haven't changed the Bit Wednesday, same cold eyes and wicked smile. <laughs> oh, you flatterer, you have not changed a bit. I am so glad you called. It is always so worrying to uh, see family or hear from them. Plus, we have just the right movie playing tonight. And, well, in your honor, it's called Bloody Wednesday. <laughs> the title. I do hope that it is insane and deranged. <gasps> oh, most assuredly. And it also has ghosts and a talking teddy bear. Oh, goody. Great, so let's sit back and we'll get ready to enjoy tonight's nightmarish feature, Bloody Wednesday. Let's Go right over here and we'll type it into the old internet haunted keyboard. Bloody Wednesday. All right. Had a few more words into it. <laughs> so now we'll go right into it and tune it into the internet haunted TV. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching you. <laughs> I've been watching you. <laughs> the evening news on television keeps reminding us we live in a violent world. After sundown, most of us try to keep off the streets and stay out of public parks. We feel safe in our homes, behind locked doors. The last place we would feel threatened is our neighborhood coffee shop. The film you are about to see depicts what happened in one of these coffee shops. Great. 
right, Jake. My car's ready, I assume. The mechanic is Harry. You'll find him in the back. Okay. Thanks, Jake. You, Harry? No, he's over there. My car. My car. Jake! Where's the motor? Jake, there's no motor in this car. My car! Smoking something? Taking pills? Nothing like that. I just can't make things fit anymore. What the hell do you mean they don't fit? All them parts are made to fit. Anything comes apart, fits together again. You don't understand, Ben. You just don't understand. Make me understand. Go ahead. Make me understand. Me. I don't fit. If I don't fit, how can I make anything else fit? Get him out of here. He's fired. Don't hate me, Ben. Mother's Day. Let's go to the cemetery and put some flowers on her grave. I'd like that. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. I promised Annie I'd take her and her mother to Disneyland on Sunday. Look, we'll do it some other time. I gotta run, Harry. Got an appointment. He's not my husband. We're divorced. I have no idea why Harry would do anything so crazy. Is he crazy, doctor? We don't use that term in the medical profession. Sounds crazy to me. You don't seem to care much about his welfare. He can drop dead for all I care. Was he cruel to you? Did he beat you? None of that. Harry is a loser. I gave him the best six years of my life. Like I said. He's a born loser. I don't want anything to do with him. We can't just turn him loose in the streets. He should have a place to go and someone to be with for a while. Well, don't look at me. You can go now, Mrs. Curtis. 
He isn't dangerous, is he? That'll be all, Mrs. Curtis. You're in the psychiatric ward of the county hospital. You are locked up and you cannot leave until you're certified of being capable of taking care of yourself. After my initial examination, I filed a report. I said you were dangerous. A walking time bomb. I don't feel dangerous. You don't feel anything. That's sick. Maybe you're the one that's sick. I'm hanging around with too many loonies. You refuse to communicate. You behave as though you're all alone in this world. You've got it all wrong, Doc. I don't follow little girls into the park. I'm not about to mug some old lady. The only thing I use a knife for is to cut bread. I don't hate anyone. If you were 80, Harry, I could buy that. But you're 30. You're strong, full of energy. Try plugging up a spout of a tea kettle under a big flame. It blows up. If it gets too hot, we'll get out of the kitchen. The whole world's one big kitchen. There's nowhere to hide. So where do I run? You don't. You adapt. It's the only way to survive. Adapt. I'll get a job. Eat three meals a day, get plenty of exercise, and take my vitamin C. Don't smart-ass me. Well, then stop bugging me! My brother Ben will vouch for me. He's a... he's an accountant. He's a big deal CPA. I've spoken to your brother. He's left the decision to me. So test me. Besides, I thought I passed all your tests. You did. So why am I still here? I have a gut feeling you're not ready. Maybe it's something you ate. Saying all the wrong things. Unfortunately, Harry, we're overcrowded in this facility. And I have no legal right to detain you any further. I'm going to do this against my better judgment. I'm going to release you on probation. But you'll have to report to me twice a week for the next three months. Thanks, Doc. The hotel's been closed for a few years. I keep the books for the owner so you can stay here as long as you want. How do you feel, Harry? All right. Harry, I put a bell and a telephone on the desk in the lobby. Now, there's a furnished suite. It's up on the top floor. Put a telephone in that suite also. Call me if you need me, huh? This is the front door key. Keep the doors locked. I gotta get back to my office. Harry, I'll stop by your apartment. I'll pick up your things and bring them over later tonight. Come on, I'll show you where the kitchen is. church naked. Well, you know, I heard the church bells. They woke me up, and it was Sunday morning, so I figured I might as well go to church. Yeah, but why didn't you wear any clothes? I thought I was dressed. I mean, it's never happened to me before. I... 
It could happen to anybody, Ben. It only happened to you. I'd like to get back to my office. Smart thing calling the police and not trying to apprehend them yourself. You're a good citizen, Mr. Curtis. You're a dead man. Until you tell me who you are. Noises outside. 
There, there was somebody pounding on my door. You been drinking, Harry? No, I don't drink. The hotel's empty. Nobody was pounding on your door. Maybe I dreamt it. You scared the hell out of me. Look, you got a free place to flop. Just play it cool. Let's not blow it. Okay. I'll be a little quiet. Good. I'll call you in a day or two, huh? Say, Boris, you pulled out some very cool items from our museum vaults. Ah, it's especially for tonight's feature and, and with tonight's special guest, Wednesday Adams, our cousin. Uh, you know, Charles Adams, another uh, cousin of ours, took his ideas from our family, well, more or less, and he put them, uh, first it was in the New Yorker, I think it was a New York uh, paper, and then later on down the road it became a TV series, and now these wonderful uh, books that have been put out uh, that uh, inspired by his writings and drawings. This one here is called Happily Ever After. It seems to be a well, it's a, um, a, a fairy tale type book featuring all the Adams uh, clan. <laughs> you never know who you might see in one of these uh, books. We also have, uh, well, Mother Goose by the Adams style Mother Goose. I believe that's, uh, I believe that's Grandma Adams flying on the goose right there. <laughs> it's, it's, that, it's a wonderful little read. Let's see what kind of... Uh, poems or things that we have. Oh, here we go. Let's try one real quick. One misty, moisty morning. When cloudy was the weather, there I met an old man, clothed and all in leather, clothed all in leather, with cap under his chin, how do you do, and how do you do, and how do you do again? <laughs> oh, my, interesting. And it's got a skull face, and there's Wednesday. Ah, I don't know if you can see that or not. Let's go a little closer, if possible. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. Let's see there. You see her in the corner, and... Yes, and that she has a fellow there that has a skull face and dressed in uh, remnants of leather, it would seem. So we might know who he was. And, well, here seems to be a 70s uh, rendition of My Crowd. There's the Adams family all decked out in 70s uh, regalia. <laughs> so, anyway, these are wonderful to read and of course, you know, Wednesday loved, uh, loves dolls, especially to chop their heads off. I mean, and she would might would love some of the dolls that we have here in the museum. I try to keep her away from the guillotine or a hatchet. <laughs> and especially one like this, the un, the, the, well, the living dead dolls. This is a little goth doll zombie 
uh, that we got some years ago, as well as a goth devil girl, <laughs> both bearing striking resemblances to our cousin. <laughs> right, Boris? <laughs> yes. Well, anyway, those, these are some of the items that we have here in the museum. We thought that they would be, well, uh, apropos to tonight's feature and tonight's guest. Mm -hmm. So let us get back to it right now. Hmm? <laughs>
and you here, aren't you? How long have you been working here? I started here the first night this hotel opened over 40 years ago. Been here all my life. Only job I ever had. One job your whole life? Lucky, I guess. What about 1327? She ordered coffee. We don't rent that room anymore. Years ago, someone rented 1327 and jumped out the window. Three months later, there was a repeat. Since then, 1327 has been locked up. There's no one there. Now, what is it? How did you get in? The hotel is closed. I registered at the desk. What's wrong with you? That must be my husband. Hello? Mrs. Rupton? Yes. It was an accident. Yes. All four were killed, including your husband and your daughter. My daughter? ago. But the robe. I tried to stop her. She jumped. Twenty-eight years ago. What the hell are you talking about? There's nobody in that hotel but you. Bellboy? What bellboy? There ain't no bellboy and nobody's ordering room service. Hotel's empty, I tell you. You hear me? Empty. Just pull yourself together and stop talking like a nut. Well, where are you? In bed? Get out of bed and take a hot bath. No, 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 I, I can't come over today. I just got too many appointments. Look, get out of bed, take a hot bath, and get some rest. <laughs> Get you, Mr. 
Thanks for your help. You'll have to come down to the station to sign the report. I'll get down there as soon as I can. Could you leave us alone? Thanks again for your help. What were you doing on that ledge? I wasn't trying to jump. You were naked the same way you went to church that day. Damn it, can't you keep your clothes on? I told you. I was in the bathtub when it happened. I don't want to hear what happened. I want you to keep your clothes on, and I want you to stay inside the hotel. Okay. Jeez. Why does all this have to happen to me? you get here? Over the wall. I want you to leave. Don't be afraid. I'm not going to hurt you. If you don't leave, I'm calling the police. Go ahead. What is it you want? You invited me. I did no such thing. So I invited myself. Stop looking at me like I'm an animal. All right. You want to talk? Talk. I didn't come here to talk. One cold ass Swede. I haven't played in years. Thursday. You don't remember? I don't know what you're talking about. I came to your house. You must have dreamt it. I didn't dream it. Why are you denying it? You actually believe you came to my house? And you believe you spent the night with me? Harry, listen to me carefully. You never came to my house. We never spent the night together. It never was. I wouldn't lie to you. 
The worst thing I could do is to make you believe something didn't happen if it did. Please believe me. You know it, but you still don't believe me. May we come in? I've got a report that uh, someone up on the top floor has been aiming a rifle at a passing plane. The hotel's closed. I'm the only one here. Well, where do you stay? Upstairs. Do you own a rifle? No. Can we see your room? Did you aim this broomstick at the plane? There's no law against playing with a broomstick, but it's a bad idea. I wouldn't do it again if I were you. Should we write him up? I think we look silly in a report. Let's just drop it.
on now, is there? What do you think a teddy bear's gonna help you, huh? What? We got you now. Your Honor. Guilty. Guilty? 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 He's nuts. He played Russian roulette on us. He had no right to be there. But the guy's a weirdo. It ain't safe to walk the streets with this guy loose. Pigs give us a bad time. That faggot! You ruined my best pair of jeans! Yeah, well, you still stink. Go take a shower. Get him. He's a dead man. Drink? Oh, no thanks. Don't you find? 
find that it's a little odd for you to come here at this hour? No, I don't pay any attention to time. Do you mind if I just sort of stay here until morning? No, you can sleep on the couch. I'll get you a pillow and blanket. our best account. We lost a whole fleet of trucks because of you. Hell, Jake, you know I'm the best mechanic in this garage. Well, you were. I gotta go back to work. Jake, I'm begging you. Look, I don't own this joint. I'm only the manager. How am I gonna explain it to the boss? Don't tell him un until I make good. Um, no. I just can't take that chance. Jake. Jake, take me back. Or something bad is gonna happen. Now, what are you gonna do? Burn this joint down? My... Give me a break. I hate to see a man beg. Look, it's, it's pretty slow in the repair department. But, uh, well, you used to be pretty good in the paint shop. I'll do anything you say. I swear I will. Hey, Fred, set Harry up in the paint shop. Okay, Jake. Thanks, Jake. Hey, Fred, is Harry finished with that blue paint job? Sure did, Jake. Should be finished for now. straight blue, but I figured, hell, every car is blue, green, or black, but this, this is really something. Fred! George! Why did I do it? I should have known better. What are you going to learn, Jack? What are you going to learn?
wanted something, Mr. Curtis. I'm desperate, Sidney. Well, what seems to be the problem? I've met a girl, and for the first time in my life, I've got a chance. But I have to show her that I can make good. I presume you're speaking of money, Mr. Curtis. That's it, Sidney. I need a big chunk of dough. I don't have any. I know that, but you've been around a long time. You, you must have had lots of opportunities. Just give me a tip and I'll take care of the rest. I have seen opportunities to get rich quick, but they're always dangerous. I'm willing to stake my life. Do you recall my telling you about the two suicides from room 1327? I saw the lady jump. The other was a man, a jewelry salesman from New York. His name was Walter Burns. He came once a year carrying a suitcase full of uncut diamonds. He always rented the same suite, 1327. He stayed for a week and sold from the room, never left the hotel. His last trip here, I met him in the lobby. I was the only one permitted to carry a suitcase. And that very night, he jumped to his death. The full suitcase of uncut diamonds has never been found. Maybe someone stole it. No. I carried it to his room, laid it on his bed, he tipped me, I left, and he bolted the door from the inside. We had no visitors that evening. How can you be sure? He always hired the house detective named Lou Kramer to come sit in the corridor all night next to his door. Lou said that Mr. Burns was in his room alone till he jumped. And the diamonds are still in the hotel. They most certainly are. Well, how come you never found them? Well, I've looked. Everybody searched, but no one ever found where Mr. Burns hid them. What good is that gonna do me? You ask if I knew an opportunity to get rich quick. We could look for them together. I'll split it with you, Sidney. I've lost my taste for money, Mr. Curtis. But I'll give you a lead. Please, I need something. Mr. Burns still walks around this hotel. You said he committed suicide. Well, for a few of us, we can still make contact. And you're one of the few, Harry. Why don't you find Mr. Burns? Talk to him. He's kept the secret these many years. Maybe he'll confide in you. Oh, how can I find this, Mr. Burns? I've never seen him around here. I'd go to his room. 1327. I've had some bad experiences in 1327. You said you were desperate. I warn you. It's a risky business. Tonight, we are so proud and pleased to have a great up-and-coming star on the show, Lydia Manson, a.k.a. Wednesday Adams. <laughs> Tell me, what got you involved with uh, being a gothic actress or an actress at all? Well, thank you so much for having me. As far as getting started with acting, it pretty much started off as a whim. I was following the House Eats Flesh movie page on Facebook just to support a friend of mine when Josh Graves had posted a casting call that he needed three female actresses. Um, my friend talked me into basically messaging Josh and saying that I was interested for the part. So he asked me to put together just a short video audition. So <laughs> My friend and I went to a local cemetery. I drank blood from a goblet in the cemetery and ran around said cemetery with blood dripping down my face because that is what you do for an audition video. But luck have it, I got the part. Um, and everything has pretty much been a whirlwind ever since then. Um, I'm actually pretty shocked at how fast everything has taken off. I pretty much thought that I would just do the house that eats flesh and that would be it. But I've had a lot of opportunities pop up since then and I'm, I feel truly blessed. And right now I'm just seeing where everything takes me pretty much. Excellent. Excellent. So tell me, what was your very first role? Um, my first role so far has been a character named Verlene. <laughs> she was a very interesting character to play. 
Unfortunately, I cannot say the title yet. Um, the director, Dan Wilder, wants to keep that under wraps. Um, it's going to be part of a, a mini series that he's putting together. Um, so once that comes out, I will be posting more about it. But until then, I have to keep my lips sealed, unfortunately. Excuse me. Why did you uh, decide on being Wednesday Adams? As far as deciding to go with Wednesday Adams, I've always been a huge fan of the Adams family. Um, I've always liked the, you know, darker and macabre things, but picking her for a cosplay was kind of obvious. Um, long, dark hair, dark eyes, pale skin. I mean, kind of fit. <laughs> um, and I do have some slightly homicidal tendencies, so kind of ended up with her pretty easily. So here we go. Okay. How about this? Where would you like to be in uh, your career in, say, 10 years? As far as where I see myself in 10 years for my career, I think I would love to be behind the camera more, um, writing my own scripts, being able to direct a film. Um, I would love to, to get more into cinematography and all those types of things. Even the short amount of time I've been able to be on set and just pick up the few things that I have been able to pick up, it's been pretty amazing so far. So I think in 10 years from now, I'm pretty sure I'd be able to pick up a ton more and I'm sure I would fall even more in love with it than I have now. Well, we want to thank you for being on Monster Movie Night and taking time out to uh, for this interview. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me. It, it's been a blast being able to to bring Wednesday to life. It's it's so much more different when you're just taking photos compared to actually putting words in her mouth. I was trying to pick an accent that I thought would be interesting for her because, you know, I'm more of a grown-up version of Wednesday right now. So I just want to play her a little differently. So thank you for giving me that opportunity. <laughs> suitcase? He said that they hadn't found it. You're welcome to search for it, Harry. What chance have I got if nobody else has found it? I need you to tell me where it is. Why should I do that, Harry? Why? We're strangers. It burns them in a bad way. I'm so bad off, I have to turn to strangers. I'm beginning to feel like you felt the night that you jumped. I didn't jump. I was pushed. The house detective, Lou Kramer, sneaked into my room in the middle of the night and pushed me out the window. Miss Kramer. Have you noticed strange footsteps in the corridor? Coffee pots. Still brewing. In the kitchen. Lights left on. 
cigar butts. Still smoking. That's Kramer. Every night, he stands out in the street and watches your room till the lights go out. And then, then he sneaks into my room and searches for my suitcase. You want that suitcase, Harry? for a lost article. The suitcase. Maybe. You never give up, do you? I know it's still here somewhere. That suitcase belongs to Walter Burns. He's dead. It belongs to anyone who finds it. He promised it to me. That man's promises are no good. You remember how he died? I remember. You should. You murdered him. Where'd you hear that? It's not true. Hey, mister, that was so long ago. That's ancient history. You didn't answer my question. He jumped! You can read it in the police report. You file on that police report. Just what the hell do you want? The suitcase was never found. It belongs to me. Hey! If you're looking for a split, forget it. It's all mine! What'd you do that for? I'm gonna murder you. You're crazy, man. Move. There's a pool 13 stories down. Lucky you'll just break your neck. Hey, you can keep the suitcase. The diamonds are all yours. Just let me get the hell out of here. I promise, I'll never come back. I give you my word of honor. You claim his word of honor. Something bad is going to happen. You just don't know when. So sweat a little. Just like you made us sweat at the hotel. I could have wasted you right in the street. 
but I didn't, because it's more fun bringing you here. What were you looking at in the window? A machine gun? I'd like to have it with me. Well, how you holding? Show me your green. That wouldn't even buy the boat. That's all I got. What are you gonna do with the machine gun? I don't know. Now this is the best persuader in the world. Forget it. Guns are no good. If you get caught with a gun, you wind up in the slammer for a long stretch. Even knives are bad. Even knives are bad. Look at this baby right here. The pigs pick you up. You throw it in the gutter. DA's got no case. You run armed. The citizen complained he mugged him. He claimed he's a fag. And he tried to proposition you. He had to rough him up a little. Judge sends you walking with the warning. Forget guns. They're no good. You still want that gun in the window? I want to get it for you. You know why? Yes. You can't figure it out, so I'll spell it. There's a lot of fat citizens in this town who think they got it made with their gold chains and their Mercedes and their credit cards. I hate the bastards. Problems they throw you. 335 an hour, minimum wage. Shit, man, I eat steak every night. It costs me 15 bucks. My body needs the protein. I'd starve to death at 335 an hour. So get a job, get an education, learn a skill so they can pay you four bucks an hour. I mugged a man the other day for $1,500. Took me two minutes. That's earning power. And this is the best persuader in the world. You point a gun, and some of them don't believe it's loaded. Use a knife, they want to fight. One smash in the mouth with this, and they got a 4000 bucks dentist bill. Are you reading me, man? I'm trying to educate you. What the hell are you going to do with a machine gun? Music. I sure can't take care of you. You have free rent here. My lease is up. I'll stay here till we find another place. Don't open that. Why not? Don't. I decided we'll make a fresh start, Harry. I'm back with you. You want to go back to the nut house? You can't take me back. Oh, no? You're out on probation in your brother's custody. Then transfer that custody to me. Ben wouldn't do that. He did. Do you want to see the papers? If you want to stay out, you'd better behave yourself. I'd rather be back in there for the rest of my life than go back with you. You once said you loved me. That you couldn't live without me. What's changed you, Harry? Who is she? Who is she? 
Who is she? Just someone I met. You mean someone you picked up? She wasn't a pickup. No. Were you properly introduced? You make everything sound so dirty. Have you slept with her? I've never even kissed her. True love. Are you in love with her? What if I am? Forget it. You're never going to see her again. You can't stop me. I can stop her. She's supposed to be a doctor. I can sue her for seducing my husband. You are a bitch. If I am, you made me one. Can't you see we're no good for each other? You're no bundle of joy. But we did have some good times. If we did, I don't remember them. You want to be with this hustler. Why are you doing this to me? Did it ever occur to you that maybe I had some feelings left? I loved you once. I married you. Does that mean anything to you, Harry? A lot's happened since you left. I'm not the same person I used to be. You look the same to me. She's poisoned your mind against me. I've hardly even discussed you with her. You want to see her again? Take a bath. Why don't you shave? Look, you're young, you're healthy, you're a skilled mechanic. Skilled mechanics earn a living. Get a new apartment and a new car. Live like real people. If you want to stay out of the nut house, you'll work hard and prove to me you're still a solid citizen. Why don't you shave? I don't want to feel your beard in bed. Look, I got this doctor's private phone number. You're going to call her in my presence and tell her to get lost. Tell her if she tries to see you or even call you again. I'll ruin her. Are you listening to me, Harry? Harry, will you undo my strap? Harry?
terrible day, Daddy. Maybe tomorrow will be better. Tomorrow? Only rich people have tomorrows. Doesn't anybody care what happens to us? I doubt if anyone knows we're alive. All I know is that we have to stay here. Harry? It's Ben, open up! Who's here? I'm alone. I heard you talking to somebody. Nobody's here. I heard another voice answering you. What's that doing here? It's Teddy. Teddy's been with me a long time, Ben. Don't you remember? You were talking to him, weren't you? Yeah. I suppose he talks back to you. Sometimes. You know teddy bears can't talk. No. So how can you carry on a conversation with him? How long have you been doing this? Since I was a kid. That's why you kept him. Teddy and I have been through a lot, Ben. You know, he's more of a friend to me than you are. That's gratitude. That's the thanks I get for taking care of you? Sorry to be such a father, Ben. I got bad news, Harry. They sold the hotel. Our wrecking crew is coming to tear it down. You'll have to move. Move? Where am I going to move? I'll have to find another place. Where? I don't know. Harry, you got to shape up. I don't know how much longer I can help you. I'm a mess. I played the market and I guessed wrong. I'm broke. Nan finds out she's going to throw me out. I'm sorry for your troubles, Ben. Sometimes I wonder whether it's worth it. You, you struggle and sweat to pile up a few bucks for your old age, you end up busted. Still a hundred years old. No, it's not you. The whole system's falling apart. You know, I keep the books for 50 small corporations. They're all in hot water. Even the banks are in a mess. They audit them right now, most of them close up. I can go to Canada, Ben. Canada? It takes 10 years for a foreigner to get a work permit in Canada. Well, how about Africa or Australia? You're not right, Harry. You never have been. You can't go. Look, if you're older, I can get you in a home, but right now you don't qualify. There's got to be some place for me. We should have had this talk years ago. I keep sweeping it under the rug. Wash dishes. They don't need dishwashers anymore. Fast food places use paper plates and throw them away. I could fry hamburgers. They only hire high school kids. I'm not proud, Ben. If I have to, I'll, I'll beg. You need a license to beg. You've got to be a cripple to get a license. Ben, make me a cripple. That's crazy talk. Said I wasn't right. But I didn't mean that way. They let him come by? No. I called her. Told her about my predicament. She wants to come back to you. You shouldn't have done that. I had to. Who else you got? Don't go in there! Don't! Elaine wants you back. I guess she found out that life's not so rosy for a divorcee. Look, I know you don't want her back, but she might be good for you right now. Be nice to her and you'll get along. You know, you don't have to love her to be nice to her. <laughs> I haven't loved my wife for years. And I'd be lost without her. You got no choice, Sherry. You're just hanging there, kid. I'm still your big brother. Don't forget.
forget that, all right? My dear fiends, I want to show you something that we just got here for Monster Movie Night and in our home Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum. Uh, it's a, actually, it's a little mini-me of myself and Boris. It's made by Phoenix Comics and Toy Company, and our good friend Rob Fleck, the artist, rendered these up a little mini me. You can see that uh, he has Boris. Well, I have Boris on my uh, right hand, and it even has my little glasses and uh, my uh, cane, of course, Nightmare. Uh, everyone knows Nightmare, huh? And, of course, and even the, uh, the uh, keychain that runs right across the vest. And you can see my hair in the back with my cape <laughs> and uh, beard. It, it's, it's a wonderful rendition of, of me. And It will go in our museum and in honor in, in a an auspicious place now that I can be among my monster toys as a monster toy. Now, you can also get one by, uh, well, emailing me or go to uh, the Phoenix, uh, Phoenix Comic and Toy uh, uh probably dot com thereabouts and you can also get with these you will get a card a bio card with my picture on one side and my bio on the back side ah isn't that wonderful well anyway you email me or message me and I'll get you the information that you need hmm all right I could never, I could never walk right. I thought when I grew up, that, that it would all go away, it would change. Come in, Harry. I was worried you weren't coming this evening. The hotel's being torn down. I have to get out tomorrow. Does your brother know? He's the one that told me. He's in big trouble himself. It's good to see you, Doc. Come on, Harry. Sit down. Do you hear us? Hear what, Harry? There's always a drum beating out there. Sometimes louder, sometimes softer. It's always, always beating. Since when have you heard this drum, Harry? I don't remember when it started. Harry. I'll stay at the airport. They won't bother you there for a couple of days. I've been reviewing your tapes. 
I understand. I want to help you. But you have to show me how. You won't let me inside you. If you could see inside my head, you'd run. If you sign yourself in the hospital, I can see you every no, day. No, no, they'll never let me out. Where are you going, Harry? I've got things to pack up at the, at the hotel. I got... Please, stay a while. No. I've overstayed my welcome. can't play. Never could. Chief of staff. I've just seen Harry Curtis. He needs to be readmitted. I'm afraid that's impossible, doctor. I tell you, we must act immediately. Why can't you continue treating him as an outpatient? He's at the breaking point. He has no police record of violence. The only thing he was admitted here for is indecent exposure. Surely that's not an indication of violent tendencies. Something must be done now. The Supreme Court of this state has ruled that no one can commit anyone without their consent unless they are apprehended in the commission of a felony. Isn't there some way you can get him to sign himself in? He won't do that. You have no authority to judge anyone, doctor. This hospital could be sued for false arrest. Then you'll do nothing? My hands are tied.
Western Division, Sergeant Gregory. I need to speak to someone in charge here. Western Division, Sergeant Gregory. I want to report a dangerous man. Who's in charge? I am. Here, fill out this form and make sure you sign it. I don't want to file a complaint. This man needs help. Can't help you, lady, till you fill out this paper. This man is dangerous. I know I'm a doctor. Lady, if he's beating up on you, come down here and file a complaint. No, I can't send anyone. The cars are all out on duty. Oh, lady, we don't look for lost dogs. Try the Humane Society. He has a room. Oh, I don't have the number. He has a room full of guns. Maybe he's got permits. He's armed and he's walking the streets. He's beating up on you. How could you be talking on the telephone? You have to act now or something terrible is going to happen. I can't process this complaint until you fill out this paper. Western Division, Sergeant Gregory. Who broke your windows? You don't know. Anyone outside? How long? How do I know? The cars are all out on duty.
Excellent feature, excellent feature, eh, Boris? So tell me, Cousin Winsley, how did you like tonight's feature, hmm? You can go wrong with insanity, ghosts, and mad dog killers. It did remind me of the family reunions that we used to have. <laughs> Glad you called. Say hi to uncle and auntie, and don't be such a stranger. Being strange is relative to our family. Thank you for the movie, dear cousin. I do hope you have me for another soon, before I end up in a cemetery as well. Good night. Quite true, quite true. A strange is quite relative for our families, and most of our relatives are quite strange. <laughs> well, my dear fiends, we want to thank you for tuning in tonight's feature, well, tonight's feature on Monster Movie Night. A special one, a very special one. Not only a great feature Bloody Wednesday, but our cousin, another Bloody Wednesday, <laughs> joined us for tonight. Well, we want to thank her, we want to thank you, and until next time, <laughs> keep screaming.